Okay, so what we've seen so far is that we can determine where a curve crosses uh, the x-axis, so where its root lines, uh, by looking at two points either side. Okay, so if one is positive and one is negative when we substitute them into the function, then we know that the curve crosses the x-axis between those two values. Then we've looked at um, the bisection method, which is a method of homing in on the actual solution. Now, the bisection method can be quite slow. That's one of its problems. Um, and so, another method is known as linear interpolation. So, let's say that I'm looking at the points A and B, and we have a curve that goes something like this. Okay? So... This is y is equal to f of x. So this point would have the coordinate a, f of a, and this point would have the coordinate b, f of b. Now, what if I just dot the line to this? Now, if instead I drew a straight line between the two values, then I could use where those where that line crosses the x-axis as a approximation as an approximation to the overall solution, and then that would allow me to then find this point here, and then I would be able to do the same thing. And you can see that I'm homing in on that solution fairly quickly. Okay, So this method is actually quicker than the bisection method overall. The problem is actually working out what this value would have to be. So let's call this point C. So, what I really want to do is I want to write down an equation for this line and then put y is equal to 0, because that will allow me where to find where, the x, where it crosses the x-axis. So one thing that I'm able to do is I'm able to write down the gradient of this line. Let's do this in blue. So the gradient of the line, m, is the difference in the y-coordinates, so fb minus fa, divided by the difference in the x-coordinates, b minus a. So that's the gradient of the line. So, we have y is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a of x, plus a constant c, um, but seeing as I've already used the c as where it's crossing the x-axis, I'll use the value of k. Okay, so, if that's the equation of my line, I need to find the value of k, or find a value of k for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in one of the coordinates. So either that one or that one. I'm going to go with this one, a, f of a. I should have a, another bracket like those. Right, so let's substitute in a, f of a. So y is f of a. And x is a. Okay then. So that would mean that k is equal to f of a minus f of b minus f of a over b minus a times a. So at the moment this looks absolutely horrific. Um, I want to be able to write this in a nicer way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this, this is f of a over 1, top and bottom by b minus a. 
That way I can get them both over the same uh, common denominator. So we're going to have f of a times b minus a over b minus a. Take away, and I'm going to multiply through by the a, so a f of b minus a f of a over b minus a. Okay, so if I expand this part, I've got b f of a minus a f of a, and I'm going to combine the two fractions in the same step. So I'm going to have to take away a f of b plus a f of a, because I've got a minus and a minus, all over b minus a. Now what I find is that the minus a f of a and the a f of a are going to cancel each other out. So they go. And I'm going to get left with b f of a minus a f of b all over b minus a. So that's my value of k. So what I can now say is that I've got y is equal to, if I can write that here, so y is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a x plus b f of a minus a, when you have space, a f of b all over b minus a. So this is what I've currently got, that's the equation of that line. Now I want to determine when y is 0, x is c. That will give me the value of c. So I want to solve this equation for c. OK. Right. So I'm going to take this from both sides, okay? Um, yeah, okay, so I'm going to take that from both sides. So we're going to have minus b f of a minus a f of b over b minus a is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a, c. Right, so from that equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by the b minus a. That'll cancel those out. So the b minus a's can go. And I'm going to divide both sides by the f of b minus f of a. So the b minus a's go. I get left with minus b of f of a minus a of f of b. And I'm dividing both sides by the f of b minus f of a. And that's going to be equal to c. OK. Now that minus sign can be brought inside. And that will allow me to reverse these two. Because I'm going to have minus b f of a minus minus a f of b. So I can write it in this way, a f of b minus b f of a all over f of b minus f of a and that's going to be my value of c this is the formula for linear interpolation that you need to remember this is not given to you in the formula booklet and as you can see the way that I've worked it out it's an absolute pick um, you can work it out um, with the method of y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. That makes it a little bit easier to do the rearrangement using that form of the equation of a straight line. But it's much easier if you just try and memorise this formula. 
If you can remember that it's f of b minus f of a, top and bottom, and then just go right a, b, then you're going to be sorted. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we use it.